Welcome back to the channels. My name is Thomas Fletcher and I'm the host of both the LCSW Network and the Military Social Work Network. If you're new to both of my channels, please do me a favor by smashing that like button, by subscribing to the channels, and by sharing this video with your social work colleagues and friends. The purpose of both of these channels is to create a community of hope and support where social workers can come for relevant news, information, and inspiration. Well, welcome back to our Ask a Military Social Work Life Planning Series. So this episode will be titled Life Plan 302 for MSW Grads, okay? If you're new to the channel or new to the series, I would, I would ask you to go back to uh, maybe Life Plan 101, Life Plan 102, Life Plan, actually Life Plan 101, Life Plan 201, Life Plan 301, and then there, there's additional episodes. But in today's show, we will be providing another life, uh, this is the second life plan for our MSW graduates. In the first Life Plan 301 episode for MSW grads, we laid out a pathway for going active duty as a uniformed military social worker for 20 years and then going to the VA for an additional 20 years. Um, that was, that was um, essentially the Life Plan in 301. In, in this episode 302, we're gonna be providing a different life plan. So this is a life plan for people that may not want to um, take the uniform military social work pathway. Maybe you just wanna, you wanna, uh, you wanna serve in a civilian, uh, civilian capacity, and that's great because uh, we need, we need social. We need military social workers on the civilian side just as much as we need uh, them on the uniform side. So, here's the pathway, and this is a this is a specific pathway indeed. So this is the pathway to becoming an SES or Senior Executive Service. All right. So, uh, and this is specifically geared for people that want to serve either in the Department of Veterans Affairs or as a civilian social worker in the Department of Defense. But I'm gonna stick with primarily Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, so just a little background about me if you haven't caught the other uh, previous episodes. I, am, I have been serving as a, as a civilian social worker in the Department of Veterans Affairs now for over 20 years as well as serving as a uniform military social work in the reserve component of the U.S. Army. Okay, so that, that's my background. So, you are a recent MSW grad, and I'm gonna make some assumptions that may or may not be true, but um, the assumptions that I'm making will be important for reaching the path of senior executive service or SES in the Department of Veterans Affairs. So my assumptions are this. You're in your early to mid th uh, you're in your early to mid 20s. Let's say you're uh, 23 because that's th that was the age that I was when I graduated with my MSW. Let's say you're 23, you just got your MSW and you would love to someday be an executive in the Department of Veterans Affairs. How can we do that? Well, you can start off by having that, making that intention. I would start off by making that intention. It's never too early to say, hey, you know, I'm 23 years old and maybe by the time I'm 53 or 63, I'd love to be an executive uh, in the Department of Veterans Affairs. Great, that's, that's a great first start, making that, making that long-term goal, making that intention. So how do we get there? All right, so you're gonna, when you come into the VA as a recent MSW graduate, you're gonna come in as a GS9, okay? You're gonna come in as a GS9. Um, you're not gonna have your license. Um, although, you can, um, being, that the, being that the Department of Veterans Affairs is a federal agency, 
you can get a license from any state or territory. Um, and getting that initial um, independent license will move you up from a GS9 to a GS11, okay? Um, but to get that advanced practice GS12, you're gonna need to um, uh, get two years of clinical supervision from, a, from somebody who already has that LCSW, and then you're gonna have to take your state uh, exam. You're gonna have to take the ASWB Association for Social Work Board Advanced Practice License Exam, um, as well as your state's law and ethics exam. So once you've passed, once you've gotten your two years of clinical supervision, um, you've taken and passed the law and ethics exam for your state, and then you take the, uh, the ASWB Advanced Practice Exam, Boom, now you can apply for those GS-12 advanced practice positions, right? And um, you're gonna work as a GS-12 for, for a number of years. And there's so many different types of GS-12 positions. There are uh, your straight senior social worker positions. There are, you know, there are supervisory positions. So my recommendation would be to if you can get one of those supervisory positions, this is going to be this is going to be this is going to put you on the pathway towards SES. Okay, so you're going to get a supervisory GS12 position. You're going to do that for a number of years. Then you're going to go for those GS13. Those GS13 positions are assistant chief, usually assistant chief of social work service or. Um, GS-13 could be a program manager or program coordinator positions. And again, there are a variety of programs in the VA, um, HUD-VASH, mental health intensive case management, um, grant per diem, um, domiciliary uh, positions. Uh, I mean, there's so many, there's so many positions. Um, current position that I'm in, local recovery coordinator, suicide prevention coordinator, um, intimate partner violence, um, on and on. But, you know, so you're going to be moving up every few years. And these, these promotions are not automatic. So here's something very important that I need to uh, emphasize. And this is something that my, uh, my clinical supervisor for LCSW some 20 years ago gave me the same advice. Um, and he told me, he said, Tom, if you want to move up the, you know, if you want to move up in grades in the VA, you will have to be willing to move around. And what he meant by that is, you know, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to be able to move up in the ranks by staying in one VA position or in one VA medical center for 20, 30, 40 years. You're gonna to have to be willing to go from one medical center to another medical center. So that's that's gonna be very important if you, if you are an ambitious person that wants to reach executive SES levels, you will have to be willing to move from one VA medical center to another VA medical center, from one state to another state, right? So that's a very important, that's a very important part of this process. Now, not everybody wants to reach those executive positions, those SES positions. If that's not your ambition, if that's not your intention, then you could stay, you know, and, and it's very common to see people stay in one VA for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 35 years. Um, at my VA, I, I, I still am amazed and astonished uh, when people get their service awards for 40 years, 45 years, 50 years, I think I've I think I've been at one of those um, those um, award ceremonies where somebody received an award for 50. Actually, this was recently. I actually I'm work, I actually work with a coworker who got his 55 year award that just this past year. You know, and he's been he's been at the same VA for the past, probably the past 50 years. His first five years were in active duty. And when he finished his active duty, he came to the VA. 
right? Nothing wrong with that. But if you are, if you know that you're a person that's very ambitious and that has leadership, leadership qualities, leadership potential, you know that you wanna be a manager, you know that you wanna be an executive, you know that you wanna be a supervisor, then you will have to be willing to move around in the VA, okay? So GS-13s, assistant chief positions, uh, program manager positions, right? GS-14s, GS-14s are usually upper level program manager, um, social work chief, uh, domiciliary chief. Um, if you're a doctor, if you're a medical doctor, you're automatically gonna come in as a GS-15, okay? And that's, that's appropriate because as we know, doctors, they, after, after four years of college, they do four years of medical school, then another four to eight years of residency training, and then sometimes another year or two of fellowship. So by the time a doctor um, comes to the VA, they've, they've had over close to over 20, at least easily 10 years of training after college, so. Um, but if you're a social worker to get a GS-15, you, you will have to find a position where you are supervising a lot of supervisors, okay? So this is gonna be a big department, whether it's a social work service, whether it's a HUD-VASH uh, department, uh, whether it's a homeless program department, you will, you will have a lot of supervisors under you. And these will not be first level supervisors, these will be second level supervisors, right? So, and GS-15 is the highest level in the GS system. GS system goes from GS-1 to GS-15, right? After GS-15 is the SES. So let me, let me break down what, what exactly the SES people in the SES are doing. So folks that get into the SES are your assistant directors of, vet of VA medical centers, assistant directors, directors, uh, VISN or Veteran Integrated Service Network uh, directors, um, a mental health VISN chiefs. Okay. So these are, these are folks that, again, are in executive positions either at the medical center level, at the vision level, or at the central office level. So that's another area where you can, um, you can become a leader in what we call our central office, VA central office. Um, and central office is, is the headquarters at, in DC. But there's a lot of VA central office positions that are, that are stationed around the country that are not in DC. So you may, you may have VA central office positions um, at a medical center in Florida, at a medical center in Los Angeles, at a medical center in New York City, um, at a medical center in Boston, all over the country, all over the country, okay? So if you start as an MSW grad, at age 23 and you go after and again to to get these different to move up you have to apply for different positions so again there's no automatic promotions from gs9 so if you get a, G, a gs9 slash 11 position you can be in that position without changing jobs but after you've after you've reached 11 now you're gonna have to apply for another job to get to 12 right so that's really how the VA works um, when I came into the VA I came into the VA as a GS 11 okay and I had ambitions of, of moving beyond that GS 11 position as much as I loved it that was a mental health intensive case management position I did that for about four and a half years I love I loved working with the veterans I loved working with my co-workers but I knew that I, I had more skills, talents, and abilities to offer um, the VA and the system and, and veterans in general. So I had to apply for GS-12 position, and that's what I did. Actually, there was one GS-12 position that I was offered without an interview based on 
my performance as a GS11 for that four and a half years. And that does happen. That does happen. You know, if you are really good in your job and uh, a higher level position becomes available, your supervisor, your chief in your service may notice all the great work that you're doing in your current position and they may offer you, they may offer you a promotion without interviewing. And that did happen to me. That did happen to me from GS11 to GS12. But there was another GS12 that I was really passionate about and I had to apply for that job and interview for that job and I was able to get that job, right? Um, so that position was a GS12 slash 13. And I did that job for about two years. Um, and I should have, in that position, I should have had an automatic promotion from 12 to 13 because that's how the position was written um, per HR. That didn't happen. And sometimes things don't really happen the way they're supposed to happen. Um, so I decided to um, get another GS-12 position at, at, the, at the original VA that I started out at. And I did that for about three years and then I decided I wanted to go back to the position that I had left, the, the 12 slash 13. And uh, lucky enough, that position was had been vacant for the three years that I had left it. And I was able to go back to that position without interviewing because I, was, I had already been in the position before. Um, so when I came back, I was able to come back as GS 13, right? Um, but if I wanted, if I wanted to go to get a GS-14 position, and I have applied, I have applied to many GS-14 positions at my VA, right? Um, and and I, wasn't, I wasn't selected for them. But that's the name of the game. Again, if you want to move up in the VA, you have to be willing to move around the country, right? And probably, that's probably what I would have to do to get a GS-14 at this point. I'd, I would probably have to, um, apply for a position probably on the other side of the, the country. That's the name of the game. You have to be willing to move around um, to move up, right? So that is the, that is the, that is the, the pathway that I want to, I want to, uh, I would like for you to consider the pathway to becoming a senior executive service in the VA. And again, if you start out at age 23 and you again, you you apply for positions all around the country, I could almost guarantee you, again, there's no guarantees in life, but again, if you follow this blueprint starting at age 23, you could easily get to GS14 GS15 by the age of 43. Again, if you're if you follow it the way I'm telling you, you're you you know you're willing to move around different VA medical centers around the country, and this may not appeal to everybody. You know, some you know most people like to put down roots, buy a house, start a family, and and stay in one place. But if you are more unconventional and you're willing to move around. You know, just like, you know, just like our active duty service members have to move around every three years. So if you have that mindset that you're willing to move around, you know, you could probably reach GS15, age 43, 44, 45, and you could probably reach SES by, by your 50s. Again, starting, again, assuming that you're starting at age 23, you know, and then those higher level positions above SES are, you know, presidential appointment, you know, Senate confirmation. Now that's like your Secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, uh, Deputy Secretary of Veterans Affairs, your undersecretaries, you know, now that's a whole nother level. That's, you know, that's now, now you're getting into, you know, your political connections, right? But, but regular SES, you know, your hospital directors, your vision directors, your assistant directors, those do not require um, t 
to my knowledge, they don't require Senate confirmation. Um, I could be wrong about that, but um, but they're still very high level positions, assistant director, um, director of a hospital, vision directors, um, mental health, uh, vision mental health uh, chief, you know, things like that. So give it ser serious consideration. Again, this is, a, this is an alternate pathway to uh, doing active duty or doing active duty, then working in the VA. This is a 30 to 40 year plan, right? 23, let's say 23 to 63. All right, I'm gonna stop right there, but I wanna thank you all for watching this video. For all the social workers and other licensed mental health professionals, Thank you for the work that you do every day for your clients, for your agency, and for the profession. Please continue to support each other and yourselves. Bye for now.